So I'm Lindsay Vaughan from Tasman District Council. Yeah. I've been involved with ants over 10 years. Oh, have I? <laughs> so I'm interested in sort of, you know, you've been involved for a long time. What brings you along here to the course? Well, we want to find out if we can find out anything more that we don't know about. Right. Ants. Yeah. You've had information in the letterbox. Oh, yes. yes. On a regular basis with yes. my name on the bottom. Yes. Yeah. Has that been helpful? Yes. Yes, it has. Yes. But it's not quite the same as being there and talking with people, well, I guess. Yeah, and of course that might... Cash registers has an outflow all the time yeah, with all these ants. You know? They keep coming back, don't they? But the frustrating part is that the neighbours don't care. Yes, yes. And this is why it's becoming a real problem. You've shifted now, haven't you, into an area which has got ants? Yes, that's right. Yes, I've been there for about three years now, and the ants are winning now. So you've come along here for? Oh, oh, for some more ideas, really, and also to understand their life cycle or, or their behaviour better. Well, they've been in our neighbourhood for about four years. I've been keeping an eye on them and keeping them at bay. But I'm hoping to learn something a bit more than that this morning. Right, um, good morning. Um, I think it's time that we can get underway. There might be one or two late speakers uh, coming in. I'd like to welcome you all to Native College and to this course which has been organised as part of the Native College Community Education Programme. It's great to see so many people uh, interested in a problem which will continue to affect more and more of us every year. Now, I think we're very fortunate to have a lot of expertise here this morning, over here on the stage. Firstly, I'd like to introduce Lindsay Vaughan, so Lindsay just Put your hand up so we can see him. Um, Lindsay's the biosecurity coordinator for the Nelson Tasman area and he's based at the Tasman District Council. Now without his encouragement and support over the past nine months, this course wouldn't have eventuated. Now Lindsay has with him Robin Venzola, um, who's also a biosecurity officer at the Tasman District Council. We're also fortunate to have with us Stephen Fryer. Now, there's Stephen on the end here. Um, now, Lindsay believes that Stephen's head and shoulders above other commercial pest operators is more than just a job, but also a genuine desire to help those who have been affected by them. Presenters today are Peter, Peter Visser, and Richard Todd. Now, um, Peter, amongst other things, is the tertiary manager South Island for Key Industries. He has wide experience in dealing with invasive ants throughout New Zealand. And he spent the past week working on Kauau Island, where there is a concerted effort to try and eradicate the Argentine ants there. Also involved in the past in that campaign, I know is Richard Toft, an entomologist based in Nelson. Entomology is the study, is the scientific study of insects which must be an enormous field as there are some 1.3 described species, which apparently is more than two thirds of all known organisms. But fortunately for us, Argentine and Darwin's ants are among the insects that Richard has focused his attention on. Okay, so how will our time be spent this morning? First, I'm going to ask a, a brief introductory question to Lindsay, Richard and Peter and get a brief, brief reply. Uh, then we will have the first of two PowerPoint presentations, which will be presented, as you can see, by Richard, and that will last approximately 45 minutes. This will be followed um, by a break for a cup of tea or coffee, uh, through in the staff room, uh, during which time you can move around, talk to others, talk to the experts, look at the specimens, uh, look at Stephen's products. Then we'll have the second PowerPoint presentation done by Peter, after which we'll have a chance to ask final questions, collect any handouts that are on the table you haven't already got, and so on. So I'd like to get underway by um, asking a brief questions. If someone could turn the, turn the mic, make sure that mic's on. I'll start with Lindsay, and, and put this to him. That Lindsay's the local biosecurity coordinator, based at the Tasman District Council. And I want to ask Lindsay, what role does he see councils have in controlling Argentine and Darwin's ants in their areas? 
Very good. Thanks, Jeff, and I'd just like to acknowledge too your input in making this all happen. It's a role where council hasn't featured, so and congratulate you on drawing in a professional background to run this out of enthusiasm and commitment. Council's been involved with ANTS for about a decade. They first, we first became aware of them in Nelson in 2004, and it's really been with the help of people like Richard Toff and Peter Visser, and through the hard work of people like Robin on the ground and Stephen, that we've come to where we are at the moment in dealing with them. We're optimistic we could control them relatively easily at the beginning. It hasn't worked that way. That way they're much more complex insect to deal with than any, pretty well any of the other pests we've got in our pest strategy. And we started off just with extinguished as a product, and we'll hear more about that later. But we found people kept getting reinvaded. We got involved with looking at trying to treat roadside as a means of trying to slow the rate of street. And we've decided now to move away from that because it's not cost effective for us. So council will continue to survey the ants on an annual basis. We'll continue to provide residents with information on the products that are available and the current recommendations on treatment. So council will continue to be involved, but probably in a little more of a, a slightly different role to the ones it has had in the past. The, the ants are spread through many of the North Island centres, and most councils have found that it's just too difficult to get involved with them. And they've had other pests which are high priority to deal with. So we're really the only council that continues to deal with Argentine ants on the, and Darwin's ants on a, on a significant scale. But because of the community concern about it and because of the potential impact of these ants on our horticulture system, we're hanging in there. OK, so I can see that we're lucky here, living in this area, that at least the council has some involvement. Um, and we uh, should be grateful for that. Now, Richard, um, as a result of your research, I'd like to know if, if you think these ants could become a serious threat to our way of life and to our economy. Um, yeah, Jeff, I think you know, the turnout here today um, shows that they're already having an impact on our, our way of life and the fact people are um, prepared to come along here and um, are spending money on controlling these ants. But um, certainly their impact on you know, people's ability to enjoy their gardens and have picnics and um, um, you know, even public food events outside in some areas become very, very difficult in the presence of these ants. And in terms of the economic Im impact, that's just going to continue to grow um, through impacts on horticulture, um, beekeepers now are being impacted by these ants, and the cost of control as well. Uh, but the other thing I would point out is um, one of the real threats of these ants is impacts on biodiversity. Um, and it's known throughout the world wherever Argentine ants in particular get established, um, they wipe out all the native ant species in that area. They can't survive with them. And so, um, although they don't enter, as far as we know, very far into New Zealand's native forests, there's a lot of other rare habitats, um, particularly offshore islands, scrublands, coastal areas, that are under big threat from these guys. OK, so we're going to continue to hear more about them on, on that level. Peter, when I first met Peter, I realised that I could listen to him all day telling stories about Argentine ants. Um, so... We haven't got all day, but I'm going to ask um, Peter, um, look, you've come across some bad situations. Could you, could you just very briefly tell us about two of these that maybe spring to mind? Actually, it's, it's interesting. Most people really start wanting to do something about the ant population on their property when it becomes a social issue. And that is usually the, the cause and effect that results in. I've got many, many examples, just a couple um, that happened uh, fairly recently. One was I was involved in a school right up north in Kaitaia, which was an area school, and the preschool area, which was the Little Uns, uh, which had quite a, a big um, 
range of ages from about six months through to about four and a half, um, was about to close down because the Argentine ant population was so extreme they couldn't occupy any of the outdoor living space, their lunch boxes were being invaded, any time that the children sat on the floor they were being smothered um, because unfortunately Argentine ants do enjoy tender young skin and they will bite that as will sometimes older people as well. So they were getting coming home with rashes and the parents were getting upset because they thought the school was a safe environment and they found it wasn't. So that was one example. Uh, and we actually really dealt with them and got rid of them. Right, now we can move on to the first session and I'm going to invite Richard up to operate his PowerPoint presentation. While he's, while he's doing that, I'll take uh, the remote speaker. I'll be down on the front of the a stage here and maybe I might see an opportunity to ask uh, a question but if you have a question that, that occurs to you while um, Richard's talking please put your hand up and I can bring the, uh, the mic to you um, and so you can ask the question um, as we go along so hopefully this is all set up to go Richard and um, thank you